So now we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of the 555 timer in bi-stable mode. So that means the output can either be high or it can be low. It doesn't change until we press a button, the proper button. Um, and then it will stay in that state until we press the other button. So again, we're using the 555 timer. The uh, top is the little uh, divot there. Got to turn to the left though if you want to read the uh, part number and the lights off to the side. Um, make it a little easier to uh, to read the number. But yeah, there you go. You got NE555. If it's a micro A, where it says UA, um, that's uh, the same. UA555 will work as well. P means it's an improved version. And um, if there's different letters in the front of it, it uh, might be a different uh, type of 555 timer. So it might have some different electrical properties that you gotta be aware of. Make sure you check the data sheet. So uh, we plug it in there. And uh, we are powering it, pin 8, positive supply, VCC, uh, whatever the data sheet might say. It's plus 5 volts on my diagram. And then ground, uh, negative supply, 0 volts over there, since uh, we just have a positive and negative voltage. Uh, that goes to uh, pin number 1 right there. Pin number 6 is the threshold pin. We use that for, uh, you know, looking at a capacitor that's charging. Needs two thirds or more supply voltage before it does something. It's active high. It's waiting for a high enough voltage. So we put it to ground to disable it. That's something to be aware of. Now, um, these two jumpers are going to be coming from uh, the switches. And uh, both pin 2 and pin 4 are active low inputs. They're waiting for a low input before they do something. And uh, so I got gray jumpers going to ground on both of them. And uh, this breadboard really likes these switches right there so the top two are connected together bottom two are connected together um, it's separated top to bottom until you press the button then all four of them will uh, connect together and I kind of stabbed myself with the uh, pins um, but uh, in any case there we go this breadboard holds them pretty well right there the uh, higher quality boards have a lot more uh, like tension on them or whatever they can pop out they can go a uh, flying and I stuck the other one down there and so yeah, I got jumpers bringing this one to pin 2, the trigger pin, and then a little jumper there uh, going to pin 4. And yeah, uh, we got a lot of space up here. Now, we, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's finish wiring up the uh, inputs before we look at the output. And I don't like how blurry that got. Okay, there you go. So, pull up resistors, that prevents false triggering. As I said before, these inputs are waiting for a ground uh, symbol signal. And uh, if you touch like the jumper or something, that might accidentally give you a, a low signal. And um, you know, just even in the air, it may be a strong enough uh, signal. So pretty sure this was the uh, 10K. Yeah, that's one of the 10Ks. We're gonna just go to the positive supply and I can go uh, to where that jumper is, bottom of the switch, or I could go right to the output if I wanted to. But I think uh, it'll be a little easier to see what's going on if we just go to the switches right there. Leave the, the rest of the 555 kind of open right there. Now, other uh, videos I did uh, the output first. Now we're going to do the output last. So, doesn't matter the order of the LED or the resistor, depending on what side you're there. Um, obviously, both of these have to be on the low side right there. Both of these have to be on the high side. Um, but which one comes first doesn't matter. LED has to be inserted in the right way though. So for the blue LED, I'm gonna come up here. So usually I like to put the anode above the uh, cathode, but since we got the positive supply um, right there and I can't attach it down there, that's a discharge pin. Um, I'll just turn it so the cathode is up, anode to the positive supply right there. And uh, 1000 ohm resistor right there. We're gonna send it uh, next to the uh, cathode and then to pin three, that is the output right there, pin three. It either connects to the positive supply, but through some transistors, you probably lose a volt and a half, or it connects to ground right there, which makes a pretty good direct connection. So for the red LED, gonna put the short lead, the cathode to the output, or the uh, negative supply right there, ground. That's the shorter lead going there. Longer lead anode is going up one spot. And then 220 ohm resistor. Red LEDs aren't as bright as blue LEDs. And as I said before, we're losing some of the voltage at the output for the high output. I got the blue LED or red LED to light up when the output is high, connected to the positive supply. As good as it can do. 
So yeah, pretty uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward there. Um, so let's uh, get the power supply and test her out. So now, the uh, power supply has uh, banana plugs on uh, one side, that's uh, pretty typical. And then the other end of the wire goes to alligator clips. I already dimmed the uh, lamp, it'll look a bit better uh, with the lamp dimmed right there. Um, the output is off though, good idea to have it off while you are wiring this up, in case you uh, make a wrong connection like I almost just did there, although that probably wouldn't have hurt anything. And uh, we uh, wire it up. Outputs off and currents limited just in case I did short circuit or something and uh, when I uh, hit the power Probably the blue LED will light up. There we go, and it seems to favor that So otherwise if I didn't know I just applied power to it haven't pressed a button I would have assumed that we reset it by pressing that button giving a low input to the uh, reset pin right now It's being held high so if I give a low input by pressing the button right there to the trigger pin pin number two right there uh, the output goes high unless we get uh, power problems. So we got uh, power problems. Yeah, those pins seem to be coming loose. So this is a cheap board, doesn't hold them great. So yeah, there you can see it's high. It's going to stay high as long as nothing goes wrong. I'm going to set this down so it's a little more stable. There you can see we got about 6 milliamps of current for the red LED. When it's lit, probably about 1.5 volts is across the uh, resistor there setting the current because we got five volts at the supply but the output uh, drops about a volt and a half um, so probably about 3.5 volts total but then the red led drops a couple volts so um, not a lot of current blue led about that uh, three milliamps of current which is about right right there should be about two volts across the uh, resistor you know approximate this isn't as accurate as a multimeter but yeah, there you go. The output's going to stay in whichever state you last put it in, unless, uh, you know, you got like connection problems or something, you know. But the circuit is, if it's uh, solidly made, if you need to stabilize the supply voltage, you could put a capacitor on the rail, you know, relatively large value, like 100 microfarad or something. Then if you bump like this power supply, it probably won't affect it at all. But uh, these connections are kind of loose. It's a cheap board. Um, so it, we may mess it up like you see there. But otherwise, the output's going to stay uh, pretty solid right there. If you, It's going to stay whatever state you put it in unless uh, you, you kind of wiggle something. There's two states it'll stay in. Now it's going to stay low. Now it's going to stay high. So that's why it's bi-stable right there. So in any case, uh, that's it. Went slow for uh, those uh, that are completely new. I got other videos where I go over this stuff much faster if you don't like these slower ones. Um, but if I say step by step at the beginning of the video, it's probably a slower one for those that aren't used to building on the breadboard. So I'm going to explain a lot more. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.